Hello. In this chapter, we'll continue building our curves that will represent or make up the surface of our walkie-talkie. So by now in our Rhino file, we have a picture frame that includes our underlay sketch. We have a couple of curves that are construction or guide curves. And we have this curve here, our main body curve. And this will be what we actually cut out our surface with. So in this lesson, we're going to draw the curves that will represent the cross-section of the front face and the back face of our walkie-talkie. So in order to do this, we'll first go to our line from midpoint, and I'll switch on near. And I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to put my cursor on this main vertical center line. So I'll use the near command, and I'll get a near snap to the mid-vertical line that represents the center of my body. And I want to be just outside the main body curve. So I'll click once, and that places my middle. And I'm going to drag my cursor out to the left, and then just tap Tab. And remember, by doing that, I've locked ourselves into this horizontal direction. And I'll bring the cursor in just a little bit, and I'll get an actual snap. And you can see it's a red snap, and that tells me we're snapping to the underlay, or the edge of the picture frame that we placed earlier. And then I'll just click there. So now I know my line is horizontal, and I also know by snapping to that picture frame that I'm actually wider than the underlying sketch, since this edge of the picture frame represents as large as that sketch could possibly be. So we're not going to actually use this curve other than just as a guide. So I want to make sure it's selected so that it's easy for me to get rid of it. So I'm going to draw a control point curve, but before I do that, make sure you select this curve, and that'll make it easier for us to delete this original curve. So again, I have the curve from midpoint curve selected, and I'll come in here to my control point curve. I'll switch off near, and I'll get a snap right to the end of that curve, and I'll move my cursor just a little bit to make sure I get a midpoint snap, and then I'll get another endpoint snap. And when I've done that, I can press enter, and that applies the command. Now notice we have something highlighted. So what we have highlighted here is the original curve that we drew which was a curve, again, from midpoint. Now, if I turned on the control points for that, you'd see that it's only a two-point curve. And we don't want that, because that's not going to allow us to put a nice arc through this body. So we have it selected now, so that as we drew our other curve, we can just hit Delete, and that'll get rid of this curve. So now I hit Delete, you'll see one curve is left behind. And if I select it, and I press F10 to turn on the control points, you'll notice there's a control point there, there's a control point there, and there's a control point there. So we have three control points for this model. I'll zoom out just a little bit, and I'll drag this curve down, and I'll just, again, touch Tab. And that's going to lock me into a vertical orientation. And then I'm just going to tap the Alt key. And what that's going to do, you see a little plus sign show up there. And what that'll do is now we're going to make a copy of this curve. And I'll drag it just a little below that ground plane line that we created earlier. When I release my mouse, the command finishes, so now I have a curve here, and I have a curve here. And these are identical curves, they're just copies of one another. So the next thing I want to do, I want to do this with a little more precision. So I'll take this curve, and this time under my transform commands, instead of just doing a move, I'm actually going to do a copy. So the command line asks me for a point to copy from, and I'll copy it from this point. And we are going to move the curve up, but temporarily, I'll just move the cursor down while I'm holding my Shift key, and just tap the Tab key. You see that line turns white, so now that tells me I've constrained myself to a vertical line. And I'll zoom in to the widest part of my walkie-talkie, and I'll get a snap right here. You can see it says Object Perpendicular, so I know I'm traveling perpendicular to the original curve. And I'm also getting a quad snap. So now I know I've placed that curve at the widest point of my model. And then I'll move this cursor up just a little here and click again. Now that time I was just holding my shift key to constrain it vertically. So I have enough curves there. I have four curves. I think that's pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter to finish this command. Let's go ahead and switch to our perspective view and just take a look at what we have. So we have our guide curves, and we've shown those with a dash dot line so we don't get those confused. We have one, two, three, and four curves that are all copies. They're all identical. So if I were to go to the top view and take a look at these, 
and let me switch to shaded view by doing a control alt s and then i'll hit f7 to hide the grid so you can see we're looking down the top but because they're all in the same plane it's just one straight line so if i go back to my perspective view all four of these lines are in a straight line so if i were to make any sort of surface out of these it's going to make a completely flat surface but I want to add a little arc to the center of the surface. So I'll take these two curves, leaving the outside ones alone. I want those to stay in a straight line. And I'll just tap my F10 key. Again, if I go to my top viewport, now you can see the control points lined up. And I can either drag a box in this window, or I can come into the perspective viewport and drag here, drag here holding my shift key. And now I have those points selected. So I can do this a couple ways. I can go back to my top view and I can move the points in this view. Or now that we have the gumball manipulator, I can just switch that on and get a nice sort of angle here. And I can either drag using this green arrow and we can visually move that out. Or if I just click on the green arrow, I can just type in a distance for these control points to move. And one thing to notice is which way the arrows are facing. And you'll notice that that green arrow, which is the direction that we're going to move, which is the Y direction, is actually facing backwards. So that tells me if I want to move these control points out this way, I actually need to move that in a negative direction compared to which way this arrow is going. So if I type a negative 1 and then hit Enter, you'll see that those parts move. And we can go to the top view and we can notice how much we've moved there. Let's move that just a little bit more. Again, I'll click on the green line, and I'll type another negative one. And let's pop back up to the top view. And that's pretty decent. We could go a little crazier with the arc, but I think we'll get pretty good results out of that one. I'll hit Escape twice to switch off those control points. And now if we kind of zoom in here, you can see we have our two center cross sections, a small or a slight arc to them, and our two end cross sections are perfectly flat. So when we build a surface from this, we know we'll get a surface that goes from flat to arced. It'll stay exactly the same arc, and then it'll go back to flat. Now we could have a wider arc through here if we chose to, but I'm just going to keep the same arc kind of going through this whole center body section and then bring it back to almost flat at the very ends. And I say almost flat because we created our flat lines just outside the body, so there will be a very tiny radius across the body in these sections as this curve comes back to a flat. And that finishes this chapter on drawing our section lines. In the next chapter, we'll look at actually building the surfaces.